Greetings, everybody. It is the Ash Heritor, and welcome back to Rogue Trader. Here we are in Mundus Valantius, aka Valantius Planet, although it's more of a star system and the planet is called Dargonus, but whatever. Um, I have done the void routes. I, I realize it's a bit stupid that I picked this one, whereas this one's a whole lot less pieces. I'm going to do this one as well, and then we're just going to have a couple of extra safe void routes. Whatever. We're doing a great service to the Imperium. Other, other ships that are passing through Furabundus can make use of our safer void routes, all thanks to Cassia. So, we're going to head to Mundus Valancius and um, get Jay's Mercatum Tabule Officiale seal, uh, again, not an RFR seal, sadly, uh, ratified so that she can be our uh, trade representative and do a whole lot of probably illegal shit under our name with our protection. So, we have completed... We have restored the thing. Yeah. Uh, giving our colony plus one efficiency, complacency, and security. Uh, we have reduced our profit factor by one, but we will be getting three extra people. Just three. You'd think you'd get more from a hive world, but, you know, it is what it is. So, um, we have restored the new hive city aboard, uh, above the ruins of Scipione 84249, which was a hive city that experienced some sort of calamity. And now we get to pick a new rank 2 thing here. Genetic mercy. Genetic purges will be stopped. The world needs working hands. Yeah. Uh, genetic purges sound bad. We should probably stop those. But let's look at the other ones first. Decree on diligence. Issuing this decree will significantly tighten production quotas, dooming laggards to being processed into corpse starch, which will encourage the most diligent servants. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. <laughs> uh... Hold on here in just a second. Uh, this will reduce our complacency, which, like, it is bad, but at the same time we will be able... It, it does have a positive to reducing complacency, as opposed to the other ones, which are just purely positives. Um, so, meaning reducing them is purely a negative, because complacency has a negative aspect to it, which is uh, your colony improvements are slower. Um, but it's pretty minor. I don't know. But maybe, maybe we shouldn't be processing our people into corpse starch. Let's check Doctrine of Rationality. According to the new doctrine, the disenfranchised will be servitorized or disposed of through hazardous work. God. What is with all of this? What universe am I in? I thought this was a, a happy... No, I uh, was never happy. Uh, Shield of the Emperor. More and more ships arrive in orbit around Dargonus. The agreement with the Navy allows the deployment of a permanent dock for void ships and repositories. We would gain the Pirate's Bane feature. And we would gain an escort ship. Excuse me. 5,000 reputation with the Imperial Navy. One security for all colonies. And four crates of weapons. That sounds pretty good. And we protect everybody. That kind of goes with what I just said about opening up the void routes. Built of the Expanse, more and more ships arrive in orbit around Dargonus. Oh, hold on. The reduction of duties and the reigning in of customs will allow the black market to flourish, able to compete directly with football. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. A thousand reputation with the Fellowship of the Void. We would reduce our security by three. Get two Xenotech, two Adamantine, and two Phlogiston. Oh, these are the resources here. Um, that's not bad. Increase our profit factor by three, we would also get a, uh, a pirate escort, and we would get the master raider. I think I'm going to go with Shield of the Emperor. We're, we're a little bit of a, a goody two-shoes here. And plus one security on everything is really nice. Sure, the we don't get bonuses here, but let's, let's execute Shield of the Emperor. I think it's pretty cool. So, we'll do that. And then, we can... Head to, uh, what do we have here? Oh, we have to arrange a reception for the Navis Nobilite as well. You know what? Screw it. Let's go do that. Um, we will obviously bring Cassia. Let's just bring good representatives of the Imperium here. So that would be, yeah, this group right here. Certainly not Iliat, not Idira, not Jay. We'll have Cassia come along, and, uh, let's actually meet up with, uh, the Navis Nobilite. Hopefully we can secure a deal that will allow Cassia to remain aboard my ship. And otherwise we're going to have to figure something out. 
we'll pay for it if necessary. Because, uh, I'm satisfied with her service. She's pretty good. Not only at the navigating thing, but also at clearing out vast swaths of enemies with the lidless stare. So, yeah. If you're enjoying this series, guys, remember to drop this video a like. It, uh, helps out quite a lot. See, my channel has been uh, undergoing some, you know, nice, steady growth. Like, it's not, it's, it's not one of those big spikes, but, uh, you know, just the, the steady growth has been decidedly better than it has been before. So that's that's really cool. And uh, I think this series is uh, is part of it. Possibly also help, or uh, hype from uh, the new Elden Ring uh, DLC that's going to be coming out. Making people watch Elden Ring content again. Uh, don't worry, I will be doing the DLC as soon as it comes out. Obviously. Uh, I think we need to talk to uh, our Seneschal. Or our... Not Seneschal, but... The other Warsarian. <laughs> What's her? The Chancellor. That's who she is. Clementia. Your ladyship. Oh, this is just the normal stuff. I won't read this out again. What about the meeting with the navigators of House Orselio? Clementia immediately focuses on the data slate in her hands. Allow me to report. The esteemed navigators of House Orselio have taken residence in the guest estate and await a meeting with you. How would you like to receive them? This would reduce our profit factor by one. Ooh, let's do it, though. I think this is going to be beneficial. Make arrangements for a reception worthy of the refined tastes of the Navis nobility. Understood, your ladyship. Clementia promptly makes a note on her data slate. Would you like to hold this meeting shortly? Yes, Cassia and I are ready for the talks. Then I'll have the messenger sent to retrieve the esteemed guests. Okay. Yep, we'll, uh... We'll bring this party. Hopefully paying now will make further expenses in procuring Cassia's services less. And that'll be a ultimate positive benefit. The game seems to reward not taking the immediate obvious benefit first, most of the time. I don't know if it does all the time, which is fair, it shouldn't do it all the time, but here we have them. Aronto right here, I'm, I would imagine, and his uh, novice followers. Okay. Regent Aronto Orselio, esteemed delegation, the rogue trader and the Von Valencius protectorate welcome you. Come this way, please. Hopefully the Drukari don't steal our son while we have this, uh, Parade. That would be rude. The esteemed representatives of the Navis Nobility have arrived at the Rook Trader's Court, the Regent of the Great House Orselio, Aronto Orselio. His companions, Lady Glyceria Orselio, Navigator Liso Simon Orselio, and his intended bride, Lady Navigator Alexandrina Orselio, Lady Navigator Elena Hateria Orselio, and Navigator Danax Orselio. Alright. A lot of navigators. Stylish bows. A tall, wizened old man st proudly stares at you with milky, unblinking eyes. Loose skin sways with his every move, as if the navigator's flesh has detached from his bones. An unsightly hole mars the regent's face where his nose should be, and the old man's skull is covered with spiky growths. Ah, lovely navigators. Thankfully, or or Cassia looks relatively normal still. Rogue trader. The regent's piercing voice cuts through the silence. On behalf of House Orselio. We would like to express our immense satisfaction at this meeting, and our gratitude for the warm welcome. It pleases us to know there are still ladies in the coronous expanse who observe etiquette and the traditions of hospitality. And yet, this is not why we are here. Our grace is obliged to note how much the rogue trader has done for House Orselio by protecting its beloved child. We waited for many turns to behold her radiant visage. The regent shifts his unblinking gaze to Cassia. Come now, child. There is much we need to discuss. I... Cassia steps forward, but then stops and looks at you. Aww. 
like a lost child indeed. I will nod wordlessly. She can make her own decision. Cassia smiles faintly and addresses the regent. Esteemed regent, it pleases me to see the, gleam the gleaming sheen of gold and turquoise above your brow. It is thanks to the efforts of the rogue trader that I stand here today, and there is so much I want to tell you. But what is it you desire to hear most? We know what happened at the station, child. Your connection to the Atlas has grown so strong, we felt the turmoil in your soul, and the events that transpired have shaken us. The Atlas? House Orcelio is deeply grateful to the rogue trader for the destruction of the saboteurs, and we were willing to reciprocate such a magnanimous gesture. We trust that a treaty of friendship and alliance underpinned by the transfer of several artifacts of exceeding rarity will suffice. Now come, child. It is time we depart for your new home so that we may finish what we started. Uh, wait, hold on. Well, what do you mean, finish what we started? Were you the one that was orchestrating the experiments on her? I mean, not that she was directly being experimented on, but rather her presence was being tampered with through other people. Esteemed Regent, perhaps I could continue my education while still accompanying the rogue trader on her travels. Just imagine how much I could learn beyond the bounds of... Cassia notices the Regent's furious glare and falls short. Cassia, I would be honored if you decided to stay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bolster her uh, confidence here. Unthinkable. Uh oh. Don't just stand there. Help the rogue trader defend the child in the palace. Oh. Oh. Of course. You will pay for betraying Felic and our oh. freedom, rogue trader. Now kill them all. Wow. He just. What the fuck I'll happened make to an that guy? Out of you. Okay, oh, so the Emperor. that was. Unexpected. Let's first level up Cassia. Now is the time for this. Oh, for fuck's sake, we cannot. All right. Uh, protect the child. So yeah, one of these guys just ran up and uh, tried to snatch her. But thankfully, Aranto's on our side. So this might definitely work to our advantage. So we will protect Cassia by putting her in the front, as usual, where she can kill as many people as humanly possible with the lidless stare. I'm gonna stand back here, protected by everybody, because I'm useless. In combat. Uh, not useless. That's not true anymore. Pascal's gonna go up there. He can handle it. Abelard, you're just gonna stand out in the open. And Heinrichs, man, we have, like, the melee front here. He's gonna go accompany uh, Abelard. We have Argenta right up here. She can hide behind this pillar. And are we missing anybody? No. That's everything. Argenta is nicely situated. So, since Argenta is nicely situated... I'm ready for whatever comes. Can we... No, okay. We're gonna it's as good hit up Cassia with this instead. Which is also fine, because that's gonna hit a whole lot of people. So it looks like, um... Lady Navigator Elena. Don't think that was the bride. Um, alright. Look, look, pals. We could do a glimpse of fate on ourself. So guarantee crit for the next Lidless Stare, which is gonna happen right now. Okay. So that's gonna do a little bit of work right there. Now it's my turn. Now it's my turn again. <laughs> We're gonna go and hide behind Argenta here. And look at that, no uh, no problems with void shenanigans or veil degradation. Void shenanigans. <laughs> uh, we'll drop a prescience I'll on Cassia as well. And then let's start putting some lines up here. So let's drop a front line right here I'll see to it personally okay I'm gonna drop the rear right here it's gonna let the two of us do some dakaing from an advantageous position and we'll put our back line I mean, it doesn't really matter it's, no one's really gonna be benefiting much from this at least no one that's gonna be in range so screw it I'm gonna put the back line right All here right. whatever doesn't matter. All right, I got three actions left, so I'll we're gonna to give voice of command to Argenta, and then we're gonna give bring it down to Argenta. We can also do inscribe soul, but we don't need to do that right Who, now. So. If not me. 
All right, Argenta, if you were to kindly go into Dirt confident approach to start with, and then just send a whole hail of Daka over this way. Okay, that's a little bit of a weird angle, actually. This fucking thing here is in the way, which is apparently As very problematic. Commands, right, shoot up I this way then. You, my emperor. A little bit of a weird uh, audio glitch there. Hopefully that's not. I'll do it. Something that'll happen more. We'll do a run and gun and take a single pot shot right Faith here. Faith without deeds is worth This is why I was chosen. Fantastic. Then you're going to stay right there. Okay. Uh, that is my turn. It's end turn. Navis bodyguard is going to throw a grenade over here. It's a stun grenade. That is unfortunate. They have bolters. Okay. One of the uh, navigators there just died. That, that is unfortunate. Cassia's turn again. Can you move into a slightly better I position? Have read tomes of She'll get an attack of opportunity against her, but that's... Eh, actually, this doesn't help in the slightest. Um, we could... No, we don't have anybody in a, uh, an advantageous position here. Well, Lidless Stare it is. I guess we're doing it this way. It's gonna hit these three. One of them will at least die. Okay, goodbye. Um, we will drop Elden My Gaze on this one. Another attack opportunity. Okay. And we could give somebody else an extra turn. Though there's nobody here that I would particularly want to give an extra turn to. I really wish I could order one of these charge, but, uh... Then, um, what else can we do? None of these are in range. Very well. If We're going to give uh, a glimpse of fate to Argento regardless. Can't cast this on her again. What I could do is cast... You know what? I'm going to buff up Isn't Cyrene. Isn't this a job for the serfs? I am a navigator, This will give not Cyrene an extra turn, basically. Which she can then use to do some... More buffing. I'll see you so we'll drop a forewarning on Argenta. And can I hit one of you guys with pressing snow? Too far away. We could light this guy up with a Inferno, but it's not all that good, actually. So what I will do instead is drop a prescience on myself. Okay. That'll be my turn. Stay vigilant. <laughs> Stun grenade. They're already stunned. Okay. Onward. Lady Navigator Elena. Immolate the soul. Ears are ringing. Well, you're on fire. Okay. Argenta's turn. So if we full autoed, where would be the best place? Right there. That sounds like a good place to full auto. Actually, we can also do Doubt this. For the weak. There we go. Now we have momentum. Fantastic. All right. As the Emperor commands, I am Release the Daka! My Emperor! Oh. <laughs> okay. Steady thy superiority. Light I stand, and thy light I crave. Single shot. <laughs> Wildfire. <laughs> Full auto. I'll do it. All we need to do is hit him once. <laughs> Wonderful. This oh my is god. Why I was chosen. <laughs> Oh my god. Faith without right. deeds is worthless. Well, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't really need to move. Gordon here is gonna put some damage in on that guy. Good, good, good stuff. You're gonna shoot it. Ow! Break the morale! Wow! Okay, these guys are... These guys are fucking juiced. It's took out both of them. They do have bolters. Makes sense. Navigator guard, I would imagine, are pretty capable. So, oh come on! Right, Pascal. It's kind of down to you now. Um, because that was that was rough. That was very rough. Who do we take out? Although, I'd, I'd rather be in cover, 
to be fair, but there's nowhere that we're going to be that's going to get us into cover, unless unless I just use my ranged combat here, which might be the best option. I should not have stood out there. Oh, he has no health. I probably should see if I can take both of these guys. I sure can. Okay. Call the bold. We'll drop a bounty on that one. And then let's let's liquidate these guys. Alright. One of them is now no longer amongst the living. And uh shoot him with another melting gun. Good. Did hit. We'll drop a bounty on him too, because I think we're gonna be able to get rid of him. Okay. Uh we are in danger. I'm going to... Do I run over there? I don't think that's going to help. What I could do is actually go into melee, or I can shoot. I have my needle rifle here, so we could take him out. Actually, 95% chance to just kill him. Freeing up... Uh... Might be a good call. Let's move the front line to there. And uh, I think I'm going to drop perfect timing. And... Yeah, I'm gonna take this guy out. Goodbye. Toxic shot. Wow, what a needle. Dear lord. He's just like a rib cage and a couple of other bones. Uh, that's pretty effective. Argenta? It's as good as done. Argenta. Alright. Um, let's see here. 61% chance we can get rid I'll of you. It. Goodbye. Emperor's judgment. And uh, what can we do then? Switch to single shot here. For you, my emperor. Oh Judges look, we can weak. do it again. And uh, goodbye. Wonderful. That was not too bad, if I do say so myself. Okay, navigators are still stunned. Uh, Cassia, if you can get up into the front line here, that'd be Battlefields just are always swell. Drowned in Rather not hit up my own warden with uh, this, luckily we don't have to. And we have momentum. So, let's little let's stare these two jerks, and let's... Me? Held in my gaze there, goodbye. Um, let's if juice up Pascal. What else can we do? We'll give Pascal a bit of glimpse of fate as well. And we can give Pascal... We cannot give Pascal show the path. No, you would have to be able to move. Alright, we'll give him finest hour first. In the name of Alright, if you go... Right over here. One route forward. Running by override. Put some, uh... My vow is to serve. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Uh, it's time for violence. Only 40%. Zero. It's not a very good hit. Why Why is this so bad? What is your dodge? It's gonna say up here. Dodge, 38%. That is not particularly good. Is that... Did she hit us with that? No, right? No. Absolutely not. Blinded. That sucks. Okay. Um... Well, we can claim the bounty, but that's going to do less damage, probably. No, probably won't. Let's just give it a try. There we go. We can also call the bold, but that's going to reduce our chance of doing an extra attack, so we're going to reduce our ability to do an extra attack. So I'd rather just try and get some more attacks in, and at the very least, we managed to hit those two. Nice! Well done, Pascal. Okay, they are dead. Uh, I don't know what's happening, but apparently something was happening here. Hopefully... Is Aranto still alive? Lady Navigator Elena. Okay, we're gonna... Before any of that happens, I want to level her up. So, new ability here, which is gonna be another Navigator ability. Allies that are targeted by the Navigator ability gain plus five resistance against warp effects, psychic powers... Yeah, no. Um, it's not quite good enough. Allies 
that are targeted by Navigator's power gain an additional 10% armor. This additional armor is reduced by the amount of Veil Degradation. Okay, that's pretty good. Veil of Protection, because she can reduce the Veil Degradation very easily. So, I like that. Alright, now let's listen to Elena here. Uh, what are you on about? I feel like... I feel like... Maybe... We're the bad guys here. Mercy! The Lady Navigator covers her face with her disfigured, scaly hands, each with an extra finger and conjoined phalangeal bones. Her clothes are covered in blood, mostly that of your servants, and several unexploded bolts are sticking out of her chest plate. Oh, wow. That's pretty good armor if it's absorbing bolt rounds. Rogue Trader, whether on purpose or out of ignorance, you are harboring a monster that is cunningly pretending to be an innocent maid. Spare me, and I, Elena Hateria Orselio, will swear to tell you the whole truth about the madness that is devouring House Orselio like a malignant tumor. Do not let the regent deceive you with honeyed lies, lest the cursed child ruin your protectorate as well. You see rage and despair in the Lady Navigator's face, but neither is directed at you. Your fate will be decided during the trial, Lady Alina. I will hear what you wish to tell me. Thank you for your lenience, Rogue Trader. Yeah, there's something going on here, and I do need to get to the bottom of it. I think they're probably wrong about Cassia, but probably not wrong about everyone else. The unnaturally bulbous eyes of the Navigator constantly shift between you and Cassia. Black secretions run down her cheeks instead of tears, leaving unsightly streaks. Lady Navigator Elena Hateria Orselio is charged with the attempted murder of... Never mind. It's probably irrelevant. Justice is a sham in the Imperium anyways. I, Elena Hateri of House Orselio, swear to tell the rogue trader nothing but the truth. May the god emperor be my witness. Pathetic. Silence. With all due respect, House Orselio was hardly covered it, or has hardly covered itself in glory thus far today. It is time its representatives answered before the rogue trader. Lady Elena, what do you have to say in your defense? I do not know what it is you wish to learn, but I will start from the beginning. A long time ago, Tisiphone ascended to the throne of Orselio. She was a daring novator who brought part of the house to the expanse, hoping to strengthen our position in the Imperium. The house prospered, but Tisiphone was never satisfied. She went mad in her pursuit of power, seeking more influence, more control, and she saw enemies everywhere. Even among her loyal followers. Paranoia was slowly driving Tisiphone insane. And one day she created the Starway Atlas. The relic that is implanted in our bodies at birth. A noose around our necks. Our gift and our damnation. Tisiphone used the Atlas to control us. Subdue our will and mold our thoughts. If anyone put a toe out of line, she killed them with a glance. Ooh. At first... Many branches of House Orselio tried to resist her tyranny, and Tisiphone cut them down with extreme brutality. For example, the entire Sithala branch was destroyed simply because its leaders asked too many questions about the Atlas and wanted to know the truth about its creation. What else is Tisiphone Orselio guilty of? Tisiphone's madness weakened the dynasty, and not long ago the Novator vanished. Indeed, her loyal followers lie when they say she chose to retire. The truth is that nobody knows the truth. I hope she is rotting away on one of her secret worlds. Elena finishes with a sneer. I understand Tisiphone's transgressions, but what does any of that have to do with Lady Cassia? Tisiphone passed her atlas on to her successor before fleeing the house to a newborn child. We could not surrender the throne to the tyrant's creature. Tisiphone was cunning and treacherous. She must have hacked the entire plan beforehand. Her disappearance, the child, the transfer of the leash. We feared that one day she would be reborn in Cassia's body, and we could not let that happen. You called Cassia a monster because of Tisiphone's atlas? Largely, yes, but there is more. Have you never felt pure, unadulterated disgust while standing close to her? Or perhaps fury or fear? Who but a monster could manipulate the minds and feelings of others, even more so than Tisiphone herself did? Yes, she does do that. Why didn't you attack before? 
Why now? De Stephanie always had plenty of opponents, but we were afraid to trust one another. Any of us could have been spying for her followers. We saved our strength and dealt the first blow five years after the heir was born, striking at one of the estates on Ear T. Vi. But the girl survived, and Regent Oronto hid her so far away and guarded so thoroughly, and guarded her so thoroughly it took us another thirteen years to find her. Hmm. And then another two to get into the Regent's good graces and reach Urak V. Now Cassia is in the spotlight and the House Council is about to put her on the throne. Surely there is no better time to cut off the serpent's head. So you admit Regent Aronto was not aware of the assassination attempt. Elena clicks her tongue loudly. Regent Aronto is guilty of mass killings, intimidation, inhuman torture, abetting Tisiphone and raising her heir. His crimes are many, but this is... But this one is not among them. I'd love to see his head on the chopping block, but honor prohibits me from slandering him in a trial before the rogue traitor. Very interesting. I, I, yeah. I think I've heard enough. Regent Toronto. Right, hold on. Rogue Trader knows about the Regent's atrocities and the girl's corruption. I hope I succeeded in warning you about the danger that lurks within Cassia Orselio. Regent Toronto, representatives of your house made an attempt on Lady Cassia's life and attacked a rogue trader. Rogue trader, House Orselio humbly asks for your lenience and forgiveness. We could not even imagine these vile rats could be scurrying among our ranks. As for them sneaking into the rogue trader's palace and staging an unthinkable crime, God Emperor be our witness. The accursed renegades seek to spark a feud between our houses. I believe you, Regent, or, uh, Regent Toronto, and yet this is now the second attempt that has been made on Cassia's life. I need answers. We are ready to tell you everything we know so that this misunderstanding can be remedied as quickly as possible. Tell me more about the Renegades. They are madmen who seek to destroy the centuries-old traditions of the Great House, so carefully nurtured by the previous Novator Tisiphone or Celio. They deem the century of her rule a tyranny, and our most sacred relic a curse that must be destroyed. Fools, if the Atlas were to be destroyed, the whole of House Orselio would follow it into oblivion. Why do the Renegades seek to destroy the House's relic? They dread her power, for only a Novator can fully grasp the mysteries and harness the power of the Starway Atlas. What the Renegades call a leash, we call a guiding star. Why are people trying to kill Orselia? I'll, I'll, I'll hear it from him. Why are people trying to kill Lady or Cassia? Everyone in the house knows the child is the keeper of the one true Starway Atlas, which once belonged to our great Novator, Tisiphone. The ungrateful wretches secretly hated her grace, and when Tisiphone abdicated her responsibilities and set off for parts unknown, they staged a revolt to destroy her successor. Does Cassia really carry Tisiphone's Atlas? We believe it with all our heart. The Novator spent many cycles on the world where the child was born. It is said that everyone who witnessed the miracle of her birth simultaneously departed for a destination known only to the Novator. Tisiphone gave the order and followed them soon after, leaving her precious gift, the Atlas, to Cassia and therefore marking her as her successor. What do you know about Cassia's unbridled power? A special gift for a special child. She was born with it and grew up under its influence. The instability sometimes hampered her education, but we learned to prevent most outbursts. As long as the child remains calm and remains in seclusion, the powers cannot take hold of her mind. Well, it looks like House Orselio has fallen on hard times. The regent stays silent and then replies, To call your statement false would be a lie. For many years, we maintain, or we managed to maintain, the fragile balance within our house. But then, the Novator's departure shook the faith of many. The treasury is empty, the navigators are scattered, the warp routes are scrambled, and many of our allies cannot be reached. Which is why it is so important to complete the child's education. It is Cassia's duty to take Tisiphone's place and lead the house to prosperity. Such is her great destiny. I think I have heard enough.
Uh, let's see if there's anything more. No, there's nothing more to say there. Nothing more to say here. Let's talk to Cassia, of course. Lady Cassia, you two are an injured party in this. What would you do in my place? If I may speak, so many dirty colors have poured from the mouths of those present. I feel covered in filth from head to toe. I, as the future Novator, I want to bleach them, purify them, and let them go. Heed me. I am the one to blame for what happened today, and I accept full responsibilities for the actions of my house. Cassia speaks bravely and openly, though her hands are shaking a little. Aww. Vile wretch! Who do you think you are? Will you now start killing those who have displeased you as Tisiphone did before you? The fury in Elena's face gives way to desperation once she realizes that what she just said. She slowly reaches for the atlas embedded in her chest, looking at Cassia with obvious fear. Hear us, child. This burden is too heavy for you to shoulder alone. You are not yet ready. I implore you to settle this conflict. I offer the rogue trader a hundred-year contract with House Orcelio, committing us to charting the shortest and safest routes for the Von Valancius Protectorate within the Coronus Expanse. I will also remain aboard the rogue trader's vessel and assist her until she decides otherwise, or until duty to the house summons me to the Novator's seat. Yeah, I'm gonna accept it. Again, I think Elena is right about Tiffany, but that she fears Cassia is just bound to become like Tiffany, but that is, of course, not, not necessarily true. Could happen, naturally, but could also not. And from what I've seen of Cassia, it probably won't. <laughs> so, we're going to accept her offer. I accept your offer, Lady Cassia. Cassia smiles. You've never seen her so open or so radiant. Thank you, Cyrene von Valencius. I mean, rogue trader. Regent Toronto remained silent for a long while. So be it. We failed to notice that our child had grown up and become strong. You may stay with the rogue trader until the house summons you. Her influence is anomalous, but it has served to bring out Blessed Tisiphone's most precious talent. The talent of leadership. Yeah, she's got pretty good officer abilities. Rogue Trader, we are now bound by the terms of the contract. Your representatives may contact House Orcelio at any time, and we will respond. And one more thing, protect the child like the apple of your eye. Uh, ap sure. <laughs> Remember that you have the future novator of a Navis Nobilite house aboard your vessel. Of course. Okay, and uh, Elena leaves as well. Well, I'm glad we resolved that peacefully. Uh, with a couple of casualties. Alright, well, that was exciting. Uh, somebody needs to clean this up. Any oh, we can't even loot the bodies? Oh, man. Okay. Um, that was everything there. Maybe we'll quickly have a word with Achilles Scalander. See if there's anything that he wants to say here. We don't need anything more there. Uh, you have anything to say, Heinrichs? No. All right. Let's head back to the administratum office. Actually, let's quickly see. What, what do you have to say, Cassia? Okay. She's back back to uh, looking at paintings. All right. Well, I'll get back to you once we reach the administratum office. So, for the sake of leveling up characters, I've brought Jay. I mean, obviously, we bring Jay to this. Um, and I've also brought uh, Idira. Um, yeah, we have these tactical advantage. Master Tactician Abilities. Be good. That's very good. Ally coordination. I'm going to take this, because we do get a bit of friendly fire. Happens from time to time. Uh, Idira, I think you have, like, several levels to rank up here, so we're going to do that. Uh, we'll get you a perception. It is an ability that you like. Uh, we could give you unnatural luck. Why not?
Or there's a... Uh... Yeah. After triggering Psychic Phenomenon or Perils of the Warp, first time each turn, the Psyker's next Psychic Power costs one less action point. I mean, she does do that from time to time. <laughs> Monk Thief. Anytime a target becomes... Or an enemy becomes a target of a Psyker ability for the first time, the enemy suffers a minus five penalty to their intelligence and perception. And the Psyker's intelligence and perception increase by two for, until the end of combat. Maybe. Enemies that have failed a willpower or resistance test against any of the Psyker's ability will suffer an additional... Okay, this is going to be kind of good. We'll do Mind Siege. Seems like something she would do. All right. Make her a little bit more I always offensive. keep my options open. All right, open. let's talk to the uh, Administratum official here. Master of Seals. Ah, Serene von Valancius, you have returned. I hope the sacred document I entrusted to you last time has now successfully passed through the approval procedure. Here is your paper, complete with seals. The ocular lens on the old woman's nose emits an audible hum as she adjusts the magnification. Yes, oh yes, indeed, it is perfect. The seals are authentic. So we may continue with the certification procedure. Follow me, please. Okay. And into some other mysterious building. Wing of the Administratum Complex. Oh no. Don't be a Q. This place is a disaster. Somebody needs to clean up here. Oh god. Beds on the benches here. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is your cue, and your ticket number is the old woman's ocular lens hum uh, hum as she zooms in on the paper in her hand. Three hundred and ninety-four. When it is your turn to be seen, the ranking prefect will review your documentation again and sign the official certification for Jay Hidari to possess Mercatum Tabula Officiale. You will have to wait a bit, but it will be worth it in the end. Yes. <laughs> uh, in this case, I'm going to use my authority. I'm the rogue trader and sovereign of this world. I do not queue. Under the Lex Imperialis, your rights and privileges as a rogue trader come into effect only after your official ascensions or accession ceremony. Until then, you are just another humble subject of the Von Valencia's protectorate. My name was widely known long before I became a rogue trader. People like me do not queue. When, wherever we go, doors are thrown open, are thrown wide open for us, and red carpet rolled out. Dumbfounded by your speech and splendor, the petitioners around you freeze. Open mouth. Uh -oh. Of course, the fame of your deeds has reached the walls of the Temple of the Imperium's law and will, and yet the Lex Imperialis, the expression of the master on the Master of Seals' face, undergoes an indescribable metamorphosis. Various moral impulses are warring within her. Her lips moving soundlessly. Then she nods several times to herself. <laughs> the old woman wrinkles her nose like she has tasted something unpleasant. I suppose I could make an exception. But only because Theodora von Valancius never once overlooked the laws of the Imperium or my advice. Here. She hands out a new ticket with the number 301. May his blessing be upon you. Hold on, what was the ticket number before? Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. No way. Uh, <laughs> I think this was... Yeah, we probably don't actually have it on us. Um... You are in the presence of House Orcelio. Yeah, and House Orcelio is the in the presence of a fucking administratum queue, so. Crowd hums and surges like a sea in foul weather. The smell of unwashed bodies, ancient parchment, 
and ink assaults your nose. For many petitioners, this is not their first cycle waiting to be seen. I always have a backup plan. <laughs> I, I think, because I don't remember the exact number, but I think she, like, let us skip one space ahead in the queue. Bundles of wires have been ripped out of the servitor's neck and a yellow fluid is seeping from its damaged joints. How angry would a person be always to have to do this? <laughs> Probably less angry than you think. Oh, we have people here, actually. We have goods. What do we have here? This is gonna be bleak. The regiments of the Astra Militarum sent to the frozen world of Xenagar II require supplies of warm clothing, footwear, and snowshoes for a successful combat maneuver with the further offensive against the enemies of humanity and the Emperor. Due to a gross error by a low-ranking adept of the Adeptus Administratum, instead of the aforementioned supplies, soldiers received 800 cryobanks, resulting in the death by freezing of the majority of troops before the commencement of the mission of retribution. For the purposes of improving efficiency, the adept responsible was subject to servitude in perpetuous. As a result, which, uh, as a result of which, he is now discharging his duties flawlessly. Yeah, well, at least there were some consequences. Must be my smuggler's instincts. What over here? Two big med kits, some stims, and a multi key. I'll take it. Mainas, who are you? I have no idea, and we can't talk to you. So I guess you're nobody of import. Anybody else of import? Just Let some us random petitioners. We got some more goods up there. Guardian of order. The servitor, more petitioners. I don't think we can actually, like, move out there. No, we're fairly limited in where we can move. So we're going to head over here and grab this. Whatever this might be. Um, one, compose an order for the servitorization of 90% of the population of asteroid mining station VMK-498 for the purposes of increasing productivity. God. Prepare a, or two, prepare a set of documents for the reclassification of the world of Viabo 6 as a penal colony under the ordership of her ladyship, or under the orders of her ladyship Theodora von Valantius. Three, task the newly appointed adepts of the administratum with conducting a review of all unresolved petitions in the last 5,999 cycles. Four, make a big mug of recap. <laughs> we can add these to cargo, actually. Where was the other one? So we could add that to cargo as well. Can't add all of them to cargo. Um, it was definitely one. Oh, we can add the, uh, the Xeno artifacts to cargo here. That we should be doing. This thing, Blasphemous Prison. Prism. It's 100% of a heretic cargo trophy, but I don't know if we want to do that. This one we can add to cargo. I'm not going to go through all of these, but it is nice that you can add some of this stuff to cargo. These random things that you find. But it's weird that you can't do all of them. I mean, it makes, it makes sense that you can't send some of them. But, like, okay, I just said I wasn't going to do this, and then I just did it. I'm very sorry. Keep your wits about you. Um, where do we queue? I guess we queue here. Jay, you owe me a drink. The queue hums with thousands of voices. Someone has rolled out fetting and is settling down to sleep. Someone is playing some bizarre musical instrument. Many are praying. Several highborn petitioners are debating who is here on the most important business. Oh my god. You have to admit, the magnificent administratum machinery of the Imperium isn't without its rough edges. Jay smiles sheepishly, eyeing the queue. But, but what a thrilling adventure this is turning out to be, Shireen. I've never seen anything like it before, and sometimes it's good to take a break from the constant traveling. And to give all the hot-blooded newcomers a chance to cover themselves in glory without us in the way. <laughs> the people in the queue. <laughs> uh, man, in my game, the, the the tabletop I'm doing, like if you if you chose this option, I would give an insanity point. I think. Count the people in the queue. The people are constantly moving, coming and going, changing places, or simply disappearing from view. On your first attempt, you count 238 petitioners. On your second attempt, you count 244. On your third attempt, the next batch of unlucky souls is ushered into the hall, and you lose count. Um, I will scratch the back of my neck. You have whiled away 30 seconds of your wait. You wonder how long you have left to go. <laughs> Yawn. <laughs> The minutes drag by intolerably slowly. Somewhere in the queue, a child is howling at the top of his lungs. The, the palace adepts are sedately 
moving documents from one pile to another, shuffling papers. Several petitioners have gathered in a huddle and are swapping rumors, while someone has laid down for a nap on the nearby bench. Order your servants to prepare a waiting area befitting of a rogue trader. Alright, we can do that. At least this is gonna pass an hour. Yeah, that looks nice. Now we're talking. You feel envious eyes of the other petitioners upon you, but no one dares to do anything more than stare. Now I will wait patiently. Eight hours. In the last eight hours, the only thing that has changed in the waiting hall is the warden shift. The petitioners in the hall placidly await the blessed hour when their appeal will be heard by the high-ranking servants of the Imperium. The entire queue perks up at the sudden announcement. Number 285, <laughs> proceed to the available window. Hey, we're getting there. Throne, take me. What torturous trial have we let ourselves in for? Jay almost wails in despair. So much precious time lost, and we've only moved... Oh, only three places ahead. Oh my god. We've only moved three places ahead. At this rate, we'll be old and gray before we get out of this queue, Shireen. Do you have a better idea? You wound me, Shireen. Jay Hidari always has a better idea. What would you say to making the good folk ahead of us hurry up a little? Just a smidge. Her eyes dart playfully over the faces of the people around you. The simplest way is to make those lowly subjects bow down before the blinding radiance of your title, Shireen. The second option requires a little more patience. I have already found our first vic uh, the compassionate citizen who is standing fifty paces ahead of us in the queue. Simply offer the right words to unlock his heart and he will gladly swap tickets with you. And also, you have the power to solve the problems of some petitioners, removing their need for uh, to visit the coveted window. After all, is there anything an ordinary citizen could want that is beyond the power of the conqueror of stars to grant? <laughs> you can just open fire on the crowd. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, with just muted deadpan, we shall solve the problems of the common people. A wise decision, Shireen. Gold traders, all, uh, gold traders always say, if you can solve a problem with the hard cash, then that's just the cost of doing business. <laughs> Jay gives you a conspiratorial winks and backs away slightly. Oh, exalted one, could today be my lucky day? No longer will I have to stand in this hall waiting day and night for my turn to come. For this kind lady of House von Valentius is a benefactor of the downtrodden, and she has solved my problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Young worker says, Esteemed lady, take pity on this poor youth as well. I will give you everything I have. I swear before the emperor, only help me solve my problem. We do not need anything. Everything, poor wretch. Only your place in the queue. I will listen to the young man. The young man in worn work overalls comports himself with unusual grace for a commoner. My lady... I have been in this queue for two dozen moons already, trying to get a permission slip to wed my fiancée Zazi. Unfortunately, the servants of the administratum refused to grant it without the signature of a highborn sponsor. Out of my way! <laughs> Elbowing aside onlookers left and right, a richly dressed lady with a beauty mark augment above her lip charges towards you. Esteemed lady, my eighth offspring has lost his mind! He has decided to renounce his family, his noble title, and his talent as a healer, all for the sake of some tattered waif from the middle levels. A union with a commoner will put an end to, the stu to his studies at the university, but should Dargonus and the Officio Medicae be deprived of a capable chirurgeon because of a passing fancy? Zazie is a healer too, and she helped the people of the Hive a great deal more than any lily-white chirurgeon with a diploma. I do not want to live a life of idleness in the spires of Dargonus like you, not when I know there are thousands of unfortunate people in the lower levels who need my help. <laughs> back to minus one. <laughs> Siren is a bit crazy at this point. <laughs> you wish to study alongside your beloved. Very well, I hereby grant you ownership of the Dargonus University of Medicae. You may admit anyone you like. <laughs> the young man blinks in astonishment. Uh, what? 
Yes, of course. That is what I'll do. Thank you for your generosity, my lady. This this is a miracle. <laughs> yeah, everyone's happy, except for the previous owner, but screw them. You have an interesting way of doing business, Shireen. I'll keep that in mind. Jay's shrewd eyes are alight with interest as she watches the young petitioner leave. So she's, you know, all about making money, but she's also compassionate. So I think this, you know, even though this cost us something, I think she's okay with it. After allowing you a brief pause, a hunched ragamuffin approaches you. The old man's toothless mouth breathes out a putrefying cloud of air as he speaks only three words, death or life. Okay. Jay peers over the old man's shoulder to read his crumpled uniform. You are here to request mortification so that your organs go to your granddaughter as an inheritance. She will hardly want your worn out body parts, old timer. The ragged man shakes his head and covers his face with his wrinkled hands. Arbiter. Ozil. Awareness has succeeded. Only now do you notice the tattoo on his right hand, the symbol of the Adeptus Administratum and several interlocking chains. It appears this old fellow is the property of a prefect of this palace. Jay looks at the man's form again and reels back in horror. The, the granddaughter of this poor wretch was turned into a servitor 16 Dargonus years ago. After a and after a recent accident, she was listed for disposal, and now this old man is volunteering to be spare parts for a soulless tin can. May the exalted one keep him, or keep me from such a fate. <laughs> he's a servitor. Uh... No, he's, he's basically already dead yet. We're not going to waste money on him. You do not have to die, old man. If she has been taken out of service, then the time has come to release her. That's time. The man covers his face with his hands and shakes with countless, or with soundless sobs. Okay, I think we, we gave him some help, at least. Interesting. So that is how the ruler of worlds and all the stars in the sky act when she finds an unfortunate on the edge of her magnificent orbit. Jay nods pensively and beckons the next petitioner forward. A mature woman in, in a finely made but threadbare dress greets you. I heard you were helping those in need. Well, my family, it's devastated. My life's work. Oh, my shop selling rare hats, burnt to ashes. I am living out my last years as a widow, alone in a cold, deserted manner without servants' diversions or delicacies befitting my status. The woman falls silent, her brow raised in expectation of your response. Yeah, I don't want to... That's, that's a little bit too much. Perhaps I can rebuild this hat shop of yours. That doesn't seem to cost us anything. The woman's beleaguered eyes sparkle to life. Why, that's a wonderful idea. Please, take my place in the queue here. I insist. I will leave my details with your retinue and go. All right. Seems like the best option, and it doesn't cost us much. <laughs> a couple more. <laughs> Time passed. Three hours. Okay, I guess we helped some more people. But that was amusing. I paid off the last few onlookers who were willing to give up their place. It's a pity they aren't also amenable. Jay inspects the tickets. She now holds and nods with satisfaction. We've moved considerably. We've moved forward considerably in the queue, Shireen. But you aren't ready to stop there, are you? Sister Argenta, for instance. Jay's voice becomes noticeably warmer. She could engage the people in a prayer or tell a story about some saint or other in exchange for their queue tickets. <laughs> you could also ask Idira to use her talent. On second thought, no, that would be more disastrous than a sudden erupting volcano. Forget it. <laughs> we need to move forward faster. Use your tricks. I prefer to call it wisdom learned through many years of experience, but I don't care about the precise wording just how. How do you wish to proceed then? <laughs> to persuade Sister Argenta. 
<laughs> Sister Argenta, I believe these people have been gripped by despondency. A sermon from one of his daughters could restore them to their determination. <laughs> or could restore to them their determination. You were thinking about it as well. Argenta's gaze is as clear as the midday sky. Words of faith can heal any wound, even those that bleed not. But doubt. I will help these people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's oblivious. <laughs> Come closer, brothers and sisters, for I am about to tell you about true faith and humility in the face of adversity. Uh. <laughs> yep, we got some. One day, they appealed to Saint Justina. Okay. Two hours have passed. As they say on Ifrit, there is no star more coveted than that which points to the Exalted One. Jay casts a sidelong glance at the Sister of Battle as the latter holds out several numbered tickets to you. <laughs> okay, she was totally aware of our scheme. <laughs> oh, man. These were given to me in thanks by the poor souls who decided to abandon their vigil in this place of the law and return to their worldly manners, or matters. We've moved forward considerably in the queue, Shireen, but you aren't ready to stop there, have, are you? I guess we'll address the, a tender-hearted man. Jay catches your eye and lays her hand on the shoulder of a weary-looking man. May the Emperor illuminate your path, brother. I am Jay, and this is Cyrene von Valencius. We've been in the queue so long already, we're all practically family now. Won't you tell us what brought you to the Palace of Order? The man starts in surprise. Uh, yes. Yes, like the throne, or light of the throne, bless you. My name is Menas. Menas de Pierre. Okay, now we're talking to him. I've been here a month already. I've tried everything I can to get to that window. Nothing's working. My poor, poor Elena. She's my daughter, my flesh and blood. They detained her on Viabo 6, charged her. Can you believe it? The charges were false. That's how our administratum operates. Menas covers his mouth and glances around fearfully. I've said too much. I apologize. It's my nerves, my nerves. I just keep thinking about her there on Viabos, shackled down in the mines. My poor, poor Elena. A delicate, uh, a delicate flower, she is. She's got weak lungs, you understand, always coughing. And her down in the mines, all that dust and muck, she won't cope with it, she won't. She was acquitted two years ago, but to get the paper certified in the seal, so much time has passed. And now here I am, standing, waiting, doesn't matter. At the rate this queue's moving, it'll be ten cycles or more before our numbers come up. Pay him. What was your daughter accused of? Falsely accused. Falsely accused. She was slandered. They said she deliberately poisoned a whole room of highborn folk with cakes. Have you even heard... Have you ever heard the like of it? Those nobles didn't even make it as far as the privy. Panic, outrage, scandal, and so what? It was their own fault, that's what. A crate of fine Calixian was wa uh, wine was found. Ha! <laughs> and the smugglers were found too. And what did the smugglers do? They framed someone else. And my daughter was charged. Of course, blame the smugglers. Hmm. Profit factor minus one. I don't think that's worth it. Yeah, I'm not going to take his place. I see. Well, good luck to you and your daughter. Thank you, thank you, and may the Emperor aid you in your petition as well. We didn't take his place. Eight more hours have passed. I doubt the Exalted One will be of much help to us if we're going to change tack like that without warning, Shireen. We're not going to get any ticket now, at least not using these methods. I can sniff out an easy mark a mile away, and in this hall there was only one. 
Another eight planetary hours go by. The cube has hardly moved. <laughs> the adept in the next window is dealing with rebelling machine spirits and his cogitators, so the petitioners form, uh, from that queue were diverted into the middle of yours. <laughs> Back. Shirin, you're a saint. Have I told you that before? You must be, because I don't see any other reason why you should show such fervent but senseless patience. Can't we hurry things along? We will wait patiently. A hum of activity returns to the queue. Petitioners exchange glances, clutching their paperwork. After a few seconds, you realize that the number being called out by the servo skull for the third time is the one on your ticket. Oh, yes. Oh, exalted one, thank you for granting the rogue traitor her sacred warrant and all its privileges. If we had to wait a minute longer, heaven be my witness, I would have shot someone. <laughs> well, that went faster than expected. We had to... a little bit of a wait, of course. But at times it was actually fun. Jay smiles wearily. One last seal, one more certification, and you will be looking at official trade representative Jay Hidari. What are you waiting for, Shireen? Let's go. We have another couple of hours with the certification officer to get through. <laughs> now we have to talk to the certification officer. Officer of the Administratum says. The, or the certification officer leans over the document, his smoothly shaven head gleaming. His augmented ocular eyes were as the lenses zoom in and out. With quiet scratching sounds, the cogita quills that serve in place of the officer's fingers make notes on a fine sheet of paper. Yeah, we can't really see him too well. Uh, we can see him a little better there. All right. The document is hereby certified says the rasping voice through the metal jaw with its integrated box. Return to the Master of Seals in order to proceed, and may his light and wisdom guard you. Next. Oh, praise the God Emperor. Is there money to be made? No more cues. All right, how do we get out of here? This is true, true grimdark. Like, this was, a, this was as bleak as 40K ever gets. No, oh, I, I, we're lost. Are we lost? Where are we? That's gonna return to the ship. No, oh no, we just need to go I out here. I always keep my options right, open. we're fine. We're fine. We can go back in here. We can return to the Master of Seals. I kind of want to shoot her, to be fair, but maybe we won't. The Temple of Law and Order greets you, Cyrene von Valencius. You have returned with all the necessary paperwork, I presume. Here are, here, all of the seals placed by a certification officer. Wonderful. The Emperor blessed you with patience greater than a portion to ordinary mortals. Allow me to verify the authenticity of your documents for the final time. The old woman holds the documents close so that they are almost touching her nose, her mechanical ocular lenses clicking incessantly. Yes, yes, confirmed. Everything is in order. And this one, ah, the seal is smudged slightly. <laughs> Jay's smile evaporates, revealing her true emotions. Avoid scorpions, scratch out my eyes. Now what? <laughs> Idira stares at Jay in surprise and lets out a whistle. Well, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> hmm, I suppose I can overlook it, given that the rest has been co certified correctly and promptly. Congratulations, Jay Hidari. You are now a holder of a Mercatum Tabula Officiale. Do not forget to repeat the certification process every 100 Terran cycles. Uphold the law of the Imperium proudly and honorably in the worlds of the Coronus Expanse. And one more thing. Loss of the certificate is a grievous transgression, Mr. Sedari. Lose the original document, and you will be unable to regain your status as an official trade representative, not even with the rogue trader's endorsement. Oh, bloody hell! Yes, yes, esteemed Demar, give me the certificate already, come on. Jay's eyes dart over the Mercatum Tabulae Officiale and shine with delight. Praise the exalted one who saw me through all these trials, Shireen. This is something to tell the grandchildren about. How a humble mortal became a trade representative of the Imperium. Let's not bother the Demar any longer, Shireen. Why don't we discuss our next steps on the ship? Yes, why don't we? <laughs> uh. No. Rise um, to the top. Let's, let's go back to the ship. The dust. That was horrifying. Admittedly, parts of it were kind of fun, you know, talking to the uh, people, but the game does a good job of making you feel the slow passing of time, <laughs> which is uh, pretty funny, actually. 
All right, so here we are on our ship. Uh, let's talk to Jay. Actually, we should be talking to a lot of our uh, our crew members. But we'll just talk to Jay right now, and I'll do the talking of the rest of the crew members um, in the next episode. But we'll finish this one up right here. Actually, I'll talk to uh, Cassia as well, because there were events that transpired with the both of them in this episode. And then we'll see uh, if any of the others have anything to say later. But, uh, yeah, and then uh, hopefully in the next episode we'll get back to uh, exploration. Maybe heading to Viebo 6 to solve the problems there. Seems like that's actually where we solve the problems on Dargonus, because Dargonus itself doesn't have any, so the quest line tied to Dargonus is actually connected to this penal colony. Which, uh, maybe we can actually find Manus' daughter. That'd be uh, a coincidence. Decided not to take his place. Okay, where is Jay? I think she's actually rather close on here somewhere. I, I don't think she was far. Okay, I'm just going in circles. Maybe she was back here. There she is. Sherin, light of my eyes, give her a boons and savior of the needy. From now on, two sons will grace the firmament of the Fawn Valencius Protectorate. One bright and powerful like the rogue trader herself, and the other slightly more humble, like her unassuming partner, the diligent owner of the Mercatum Tabula Officiale, and all around the light, Jai Hidari. Jai, okay, that's, that's how you pronounce your name. As I promised before, my crew will be your eyes and ears across the entire expanse, Sherin. Just give them time. And of course, the assistant to official trade representative Jai Hedari is already rushing to Dargonis to deliver goods of rare and exquisite quality to you and your people, O oh mistress of many worlds. And once again, thank you, Sherin, from the bottom of my humble heart. You are welcome, Jay. It is what friends are for. A rogue trader cannot have friends, Sherin. Only servants for whom the word of their mistress is supreme law, and partners to whom the favor of the warrant bearer is the highest reward for their mutual efforts. Why are you looking at me like that? How many friends does the soul that shines down upon Holy Terra have? Jay raises an eyebrow in genuine surprise. It takes her a few seconds to come up with a reply, and when she does speak, she lowers her eyes. You are welcome to call our relations whatever you like, Sherin. After all, words mean little. But you have taken good care of me, and so I would like to take good care of you. And go slightly beyond the strict terms of our agreement. Here, I brought a small gift as a token of gratitude. And may the Exalted One keep watching over the paths that you tread. All right. I will help you acquire a merchant certificate. Oh, Sherin, thank you for such generosity. I will humbly wait until you steer your vessel towards Dargonus. The Mercatum mm, Tabula Officiale. It sounds almost as majestic as the Warrant of Trade. Okay, uh, we don't need to uh, do that. Argenta seems to have gotten under your skin, am I right? Argenta? What could be more beautiful than the sight of a sister of battle, whose mere presence casts light in the dark corners of lost souls such as mine? But, alas, what remains of my sanity is telling me that poor Jai can only admire the radiance of this angel, for <laughs> any hope of ever touching her wings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> Poor Jay. I, uh... Poor Jay. <laughs> Alright, um... I'll see you later. Oh, I have no doubt you will. Alright, we can end our dialogue. What did we get? We got a, we got a cape. Battle, battle scarred cape, this one. Was it the Battle Scarred Cape? Battle Scarred Mantle, maybe. What the hell? These are like the same. This one, Battle Scarred Cape. When the wearer ends their turn, they remove burning, bleeding, and toxin negative effects from themselves and adjacent allies. The wearer gains 
Uh, toughness bonus divided by two. Temporary wounds for each negative effect removed that way. That's pretty good. And then the battle scarred mantle. When the wearer ends their turn, they remove... Um, yeah, the same thing. Then the wearer inflicts bleeding with a power of two times the number of effects removed on all adjacent enemies. Okay, interesting. Um, neither of these are particularly good. I mean, they're, they're good, but not for my characters, because we don't usually fight in formation. Okay, Cassia, where are you at? Down here, right? No, that's uh, Argenta. Here's Katia. It is so fortunate you have come. I admit I was seeking you out myself. After the events on Dargonus, it felt like an anthracite gray mantle had dropped on my shoulders. I spent a long time thinking about our very first meeting and what happened next. I cannot wait to shake off this dreary color. All right. It was very naive of me to follow in the footsteps of the man who raised me in a gilded cage. And I was deaf to the needs of my own house. But you, you opened my eyes. As the future Novateur, I must gain wisdom to restore House Orcelio to its former glory, no matter the cost. <laughs> Thank you. It will be an honor to keep guiding your vessel through the Sea of Souls, for as long as the needs of our dynasties are aligned. Okay. Where is it implanted? What, wasn't it like in the, the throat or like upper chest? I, I can't remember. You will hear no objection from me, Lord Captain. You did not mention the Starway Atlas when we met. I would never reveal this secret to an outsider, but you... You have come to my aid more than once already. The Starway yeah. Atlas is a sacred artifact of House Orcelio. It helps our navigators chart a course through the warp. This crystal, I mean, the Atlas, has been inside me for as long as I can remember, giving me strength. But the others... I noticed the renegades in the palace were choked by ashen ghosts of despair when we met face to face. I swear the ghosts were reaching for their atlases. They also have them. Um, so it's like there's a master atlas. And then a bunch of other ones. Crystals. Hopefully they're not like strange, iridescent, and kind of glassy. I don't know. I'm seeing some connections. Maybe they're not any, but... So the Atlas is some kind of crystal that is implanted in the navigators of House Orcelio at birth. But my Atlas is much more powerful than the others. It's the Atlas of Tisiphone herself. That is what people have whispered behind my back my whole life, although no one knew for certain. But I... I always suspected. I simply did not wish to admit it to myself. Okay. Certain navigators in your house fear the Atlas's powers. Certain navigators in my house have tried to kill me more than once. But the tales of Tisiphone's brutality... I am beginning to wonder. Mm -hmm. What if they are all true? What if I will be a new tormentor to those who serve me? I wish I could say right now you don't have to be a new tormentor just because you inherited her legacy. You said you wouldn't share your secret with just anyone. Does that mean I am someone to you? I thank fate for giving me a friend with whom I can share my thoughts. Ha! Take that, Jai. Rogue traders can have friends. See, Cassia even said it. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for listening. <laughs> All right. I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. And I, too, have enjoyed your company for the um, duration of this episode. Yes, that's how I can tie that in here. Because I am now ending this episode, because it is relatively long. Multiple recorded segments. Um, so, I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, do drop this video a like. 
And, uh, of course, we will be moving on to the next episode where I'm going to quickly talk to the other characters and see what they have to say, if there's anything uh, going on. Maybe we can progress Idira's story or see if Argenta has anything new for us or, you know, any of the others, really. Um, and uh, once we're done with that, we will head off to Viabos, to the prison colony, and see what the hell is going on there, because apparently something's going on there. And then, lastly... You know, not in the next episode, but at some point to come, we will, of course, go and find Kiapagama, or uh, Lost Mechanicus World. Alright, everybody. That's going to be all. Ash Arrow out.